This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Here we go. Andy, I think tethering is so cool. And the way you showed it to me, it makes perfect sense. I do product photography. I do model photography. I can see me bringing this out and doing landscapes and actually seeing them on the monitor without going through all this stuff of trying to figure out if I like it. But my camera is not supported. Well, there is help for us. I've got a Nikon D2XS, and I love that camera. I've got a Nikon D70. That's an old camera, but it's got a beautiful sensor, and I use that for product photography. It won't work either. What do you do? I've got two free programs for you based on what operating system you're using. Let me slide over here and open something up. Here's the first one. This is a Mac program. I'm on a Mac, therefore I'll be demonstrating this program, obviously, to you. You say, well, okay, what does it do? It does a whole lot more than Lightroom does, I want to tell you. Now, if you want this one, go ahead and download it. If you're Windows, I can recommend one to you that I've used, and it's this one right here. Now you go to this site first. If you can speak German, that's really cool. It's a German company, but they do have an English version. You go to software and select this right here, DC Cam Capture English, and go ahead and download it. If you want the German version, and there might be some people that do, go ahead and click there. Both of these programs are designed to work with capturing systems on cameras, just like Lightroom, except with a kick. So let's get out of here. Now there's two other things we got to do to make this work, because I can capture with these programs, but then there's the problem of getting it into Lightroom. So here's what I came up with. Number one, create a blank folder, call it say Lightroom Capture. It does make sense to make the name something that you can remember a week from today, and then make another one called Lightroom Watched. We've already done a watched folder. I understand that. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to use it with our camera. So, with that said, open up Lightroom. And we're right back to where we were before. Now, the first thing we're going to do is something we've done before. We're going to make a watched folder. So we're going to go up to the word file on the pull-down menu and go down to auto import, auto import settings. The first thing I'm going to do is change that watch folder to the one I just made. So I'll click Choose, and it's on my desktop, so it's called Where's Waldo, and there it is, Watched. Click Choose. All right, subfolder name, if you want one, Auto Imported Photos is the default, but where do you want them to go? I want them to go into that other folder I created. Now, that's not really necessary, but I like to control where things go. And so we're going to get in here on my desktop, and we'll go down to, actually up to, Capture. Click Choose. Now here we go with the file naming again. Do anything you want here. Do you want to develop settings? Do you want to add any metadata, any keywords? And I like my previews at one-to-one. -one. So I always change that, make sure that is one-to-one. -one. When I'm blowing that thing up in Lightroom, I want to see a good image without pixelization. And to me, it's worth a little extra to do that. Okay, so we've set up auto import. Click OK. All right, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to be opening up the Mac version of this capture program. We've got our capture program open, and understand something. This program totally controls my camera. Lightroom doesn't, but this does. That's another reason I like using it. Even if my camera works in Lightroom, I prefer going this route. I'm going to figure this out in a second. I'm going to go up to the Preferences and go into Preferences right here. Incidentally, this is what's called a Donationware program. It's free, but if you like it and it's worth something to you, make a donation to these guys. They work hard on this stuff. I'm going to go to Preferences. That's just a little kind of a little extra for you. What I want to do is tell the computer where I want them saved to, and I'm going to go into Other, and guess what I'm going to choose? My Watched Folder for Lightroom. So we're going to go into here for Watched. So Lightroom is watching that folder and waiting for something to get into it. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to give it something. Click Select. Now you can play around with the rest of this. I'm not going to change anything else. 
I'm just going to go ahead and click here. Oh, but one other thing, incidentally, if your camera doesn't work with this application, come down here and click Legacy Support. That usually helps it work. I'm going to close this out. To take a photograph, you can do it actually two ways, and you can do this in Lightroom too. I'm hand holding the camera because I've got a nice big long cord on that thing, and I can snap the shutter on the camera and it will bring it in, or I can click right up here. But the first thing we have to do, obviously, is get the camera turned on. I'm using a Nikon D2XS. It's telling me my lens, focal length. I've got 28% left on the battery, so I better be fast here. My shutter speed at the moment is one eighth of a second. My aperture is an f4.5. I can change this stuff here. That's why I love this. My white balance is on incandescent, ISO of 200, and I'm shooting raw. If I want to change anything, I don't have to go to the camera. I can change it right here. That's why I like this program, and I like the Windows version too. So I come over here and click the button. I don't know if you could hear that, but it snapped the shutter. Take it a second or two. All right. You're seeing what I'm seeing. Got the camera kind of pointed that way. Now I'm going to come over here and activate Lightroom. See auto imported photos? There it is. It's now in the program, just like you tethered to Lightroom, but you have more control with this program. And it does the same thing. It gets it right where you want it. I love being able to do that. Remember, you've got a watched folder. That's where it's going to go initially. After it brings it into Lightroom, it's going to put it over in this one. And there it is. To me, although I love everything about Lightroom, I think they're still working a little bit on this tether thing. I think they need a little bit more work to do. Until they do it, I am very happy doing it this way. So it doesn't matter what camera you have, you can probably find a program that will control it. And some of them cost money. I mean, Nikon has programs that cost $200 to control your camera, and I don't think they work much differently than the one we're using right now. With that said, it's up to you. If your camera works with Lightroom, go for it. If it doesn't, here's a great option for you. On to the next.